This is KK7 IAA. My name is Mary. Yes, I'm in Cheyenne, Wyoming, Southeast Wyoming. It's 6.09 a.m. You're coming in pretty good, so I guess that's a good spot for it because I'm relatively new. Uh, two weeks ago, I got my ticket. I did the initial technician and general in the same. You got both. Back to you. Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So over the last couple of months, Shark RF have released the OpenSpot 4. In this video, we're going to get hands on to see what it can do and find out how much better the OpenSpot 4 is over other hotspots available on the market. OpenSpot 4 has been released in two models. The model shown in this video will be the top tier pro version. When we look at the key features, we can see a built in light iron battery with up to 30 hours use. Hardware transcoding is also available, but only in the Pro version. A new built-in Wi-Fi module has been used in the OpenSpot 4 to provide further compatibility with other Wi-Fi devices. As with most hotspots, configuration is performed using the web-based GUI. However, the OpenSpot 4 has had its hardware and software completely redesigned over the OpenSpot 3. USB charging of the internal battery is provided by a USB-C socket on the OpenSpot 4. The battery, of course, is not removable. With its new multi-core CPU, you can expect a fast responsive web interface with a boot up of less than five seconds. A unique feature to the OpenSpot is the ability to listen to call audio through the web browser. So if you just want to listen to a specific talk group or reflector and you don't have your radio on hand, and just connect the OpenSpot's web interface and enable the audio. We'll take a look at this feature a bit later on. Now, technical specifications detail that the OpenSpot 4 weighs only 76 grams. Now, that's extremely light, and that's including the internal battery. The 1300 milliamp hour internal battery will provide around 30 hours use, with the RF output being around 20 milliwatts. Transmit and receive is capable on 421 megahertz through to 458 megahertz, but make sure you program the OpenSpot 4 to work within your licensing conditions. The new Wi-Fi module supports 802.11b, G and N. You can, of course, power the OpenSpot 4 through its USB-C connector, keeping the battery topped up for when you want to take it portable. The OpenSpot 4 supports all of the popular HAM-adopted digital modes, such as DMR, D-Star, C4FM, NXDN, and P25. POCSAG and APRS messaging is also supported via the GUI interface. Now, one of the biggest advantages of the OpenSpot 4, as over other hotspots on the market, is the ability to cross mode from D-Star to other modes. This means that if you don't own a D-Star radio, then you can still access the D-Star reflectors because of this cross mode capability. What's also nice is that the OpenSpot 4 Pro has an inbuilt vocoder for transcoding at a higher quality. We can see this clearly labeled on the block diagram. So let's take a look at the OpenSpot 4 itself. In the box, we find just the OpenSpot 4 and a USB to USB-C cable. The manual is available on the website and it's fully searchable and it's really well written. I would suggest going to have a look at that, even if you don't own one just yet. You will need to provide your own USB power supply though, which is capable of delivering at least 1500 milliamp power. Of course, most of us who have a mobile phone will have one available. Now the OpenSpot 4 itself has two buttons. One is the power button to turn the device on or off, and the other button is a Wi-Fi button. Now the OpenSpot 4 can support connecting to an access point or the OpenSpot 4 can operate as its own access point. To switch between access point mode and router connected mode, simply hold the Wi-Fi button for around three seconds. Now just be careful because the Wi-Fi button can also be used to factory default the OpenSpot 4 simply by holding the Wi-Fi button for 30 seconds. If you do this, all of your stored profiles will be deleted, but of course you can recreate them. Now, as mentioned before, the OpenSpot 4 is extremely light. And as you can see here, it's also quite small and pretty thin. So perfect for popping in your rucksack or back pocket while you're out portable. Configuring the OpenSpot 4 from out of the box is extremely easy. 
Once powered on, you'll need to connect to its ad hoc Wi-Fi hotspot. You can, of course, do this from a mobile device or tablet, but for this example, I'll be using my computer to do so. The first thing we need to do is connect to its ad hoc Wi-Fi. So from the list, select the open spot for AP. There is no password, so it should just connect. Now, if you're on a mobile device, a browser should automatically open and present to you the first configuration page like this. If it doesn't, then just open up a browser and type openspot4.local into the web address bar. First, we need to choose which country we're in. For me, I'm in the UK, and then I click Next. Now, at this point, we can tell the OpenSpot 4 to connect to your local Wi-Fi router instead of a direct connection to your phone. Here, I'm going to select one of my Wi-Fi routers and enter the relevant password details. Now, once connected, a confirmation screen will appear showing it's connected to your home Wi-Fi, which of course should have internet capabilities. Click next and then disconnect from the OpenSpot 4 AP as you now want to connect to the OpenSpot 4 through your normal network. On the bottom right corner, we can see a button titled Quick Setup. Press this to get started. Now on the next screen, you can enter your call sign. The fields for DMR and NXDN IDs will be automatically filled. Now these will only be filled if you already have signed up for a DMR and NXDN ID. Obtaining these IDs is fairly easy if you've not already got one. Just head over to Radio ID website to register for a DMR ID. At this point, you could also choose dark or light mode to suit your preference. Click save and then choose the type of digital radio that you have. As I'll be using my GD88 DMR radio to start off with, I'm going to select DMR. You now have to enter the frequency at which your OpenSpot 4 will transmit and receive on. Obviously, you need to create channels within your radio's memories to correspond to this frequency. Now you can select which network you'd like to connect to, or in other words, talk through. As the OpenSpot 4 Pro can transcode across all the digital modes, you can select any of these, but I'll start with by selecting Brandmeister for this example. For Brandmeister server connection, you need to make sure you connect into your local master server. You can change this from the drop down. And you also need to make sure the server password is the same that you set in the Brandmeister self care website for the hotspot password. Now, once you have those fields filled out, click connect. Now, you may not see this message, but if you do, then go to the network tab and disable the Wi Fi AP, which we used at the start of this configuration. As the OpenSpot 4 is connected to your Wi-Fi router directly, there is no need for the OpenSpot 4's Wi-Fi AP to be enabled. Now, your OpenSpot 4 should now be connected to the Brandmeister network. To change the talk group in which the OpenSpot 4 is connected to, you can either use your DMR radio with the required talk group set in the channel settings, or you can go on the Brandmeister self-care webpage and set your own static talk groups. Of course, you'll still need to configure your DMR radio's channel with the correct talk group that you want to talk through. The Quick Call feature on the OpenSpot 4's web interface can be used as Quick Call buttons. A predefined private and group call 4000 is already available. The 4000 talk group is used to disconnect any other connected talk groups, but if required, you can set up your own. Now, the main tabs on the web interface are status, connectors, modem, settings, and network. On the Network tab, we're able to add further wireless profiles. If the OpenSpot 4 detects internet loss on the currently connected Wi-Fi, then it will search through the others for a connection. Now, this is great because when using with a mobile phone, you can enter your mobile phone's personal hotspot details within the interface. This is also saved. So as soon as you walk away from your home Wi-Fi and assuming your mobile hotspot is on, the OpenSpot 4 will connect. Also, it does this extremely quickly. One of the settings on iOS that I had to check was maximize compatibility, otherwise the OpenSpot 4 could not see my iPhone's hotspot. Just something worth noting if you want to try this and you have an iPhone or iOS device. As the hotspot is now connected directly to my iPhone's hotspot, the PC has lost connection. Now, this is normal. So now we need to open the OpenSpot 4's web interface on the iPhone. If you do not know the IP address or if openspot.local does not work, point the web browser to sharkrf.link. Allow the use of the camera and then put the OpenSpot 4 serial number sticker in view of the camera. This will then automatically open the web interface on your device. 
You can then walk away from your home network and just use your phone's internet for connectivity and use the phone's browser for control. Pretty neat, eh? Now, if I turn off the internet hotspot on my iPhone, watch how quick the PC web browser reloads. This is due to the hotspot 4 quickly connecting to the local Wi-Fi network, i.e. switching Wi-Fi profiles. Now, switching to a different network, such as Yaesu C4FM, is also very easy. Simply go to the connectors tab and switch to the YSF reflector. You can also change the modem's frequency and mode on the same screen. Once selected and saved, you can also change the connected reflector or server easily from the drop down list. Now, this list is self populated and downloaded from the internet automatically, so you don't have to worry about it always being up to date. Another way to change servers is by using the Wise X feature, if supported, on your Yaesu C4FM radio. Here I have the FT3D, and by pressing the Wise X button, the OpenSpot 4 responds just like a fusion repeater. You can use the search feature within the radio to locate a reflector by name, or you can simply browse the list. Upon selecting the reflector on the radio, the OpenSpot 4 will connect to that reflector, never needing to go into the web interface. I have OpenSpot connected to YSF reflector 96265. One of the great features of the OpenSpot 4's web interface is the ability to listen to the connected talk group or reflector through your web browser. Meaning if you just want to listen, you don't even have to have your radio turned on. Simply unmute the speaker icon and adjust the volume as required and you'll start listening to whatever it's connected to. Using your address in your page of QRJ.com, but this shows you you are in Frankfurt. Uh, it's not your QDH. <laughs> Are you visiting the island there now? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, nice to meet you. Uh, it's a late evening, uh, 20, 20 uh, minutes to 11 p.m. here. Well, there we go, guys, the open spot four. And in my opinion, this has to be the best digital hotspot on the market yet. So if you're on the fence on whether to get one or you're completely new to digital, then this, in my opinion, is definitely the way to go. Now, there is so much more available on the OpenSpot 4, such as DAPnet, which is Pages, Poxag, and also DMR Chat and even APRS Chat. However, as you can appreciate, the video would be way too long. In fact, if you made it this far into the video, then please leave a comment below to let me know that you even reached this far. Until the next video, guys, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.